hello this is healed for life and this is the ivory kitchen and today i'm going to make something for the first time out of this engine to cookbook it's going to be the uh, plant-based lasagna and i went over to whole foods market in dublin and i was able to purchase this fat free marinara sauce so it's a marinara sauce without any oil so I was not able to find that at Trader Joe's. I'm not sure if they just didn't have it that day. I could not find it at Safeway, but I did find it at Whole Foods. And you could also order it online on Amazon. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that a try and I'm gonna be filming little tidbits here and there and see if I can put something together and show you a recipe. Stay tuned. So on page 224 of the cookbook, it says that the vegetables call for two or three medium sweet potatoes, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of 100% pure maple syrup, one large onion diced about one and a half to two cups, eight ounces of mushrooms sliced, one red or orange bell pepper diced, two medium zucchini sliced, which makes about three cups, two carrots chopped, 16 ounces package of the frozen spinach, one crown of the broccoli florets or cut up about two cups, one teaspoon of dried oregano and one teaspoon of dried basil and one teaspoon of crushed rosemary. That's the ingredients for the vegetables. And it says peel and boil the sweet potatoes for 15 minutes until soft, or you can bake them at 400 for 45 to 60 minutes but it's faster to just peel them. Place the sweet potatoes in a small bowl and add the garlic powder and the maple syrup and mash with a fork until it's lump free or whatever potato masher that you have. And then set the sweet potato mixture to the side and turn off the oven until ready to cook the whole lasagna. So that's what we're gonna start with. I'm gonna go ahead and start with getting the sweet potatoes going. Because I had extra sweet potato, I just went ahead and doubled the batch of sweet potato, so whatever's left over, I can just throw in my refrigerator for later. So I doubled the batch, So, but it really calls for just one tablespoon of 100% maple syrup and one teaspoon of garlic powder, but I put two tablespoons of maple syrup and two teaspoons of garlic powder. And like I said, whatever's left over, I'm just gonna put it to the side. And mashed it until lump-free. Mmm, delish. Okay, I'm gonna set that to the side. So now we're gonna get ready to do the saute. And it says, well, I like to water saute because oil is 100% fat. So I water saute, this is one whole onion, and it says to put in the onion first. And we water saute the onion until it becomes translucent. So that's roughly three minutes. And then after we do that, we're gonna go ahead and add the mushrooms. And then I've got eight ounces of mushrooms. I've also got, I only had shredded carrots. It called for two carrots. So this looks like enough carrots, maybe even a little extra. And then one orange bell pepper wasn't that big. You probably could have put two bell peppers. I like bell peppers. Um, a bag of the frozen chopped spinach. And I had one bag of the uh, chopped broccoli. I just chopped it up a little bit more, but I still kind of left it big so that maybe we can have some chew to our lasagna. So we're going to go ahead and get these onions sauteed until they are translucent. And that's if I need to add more water so it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. Water saute is way more healthier than any kind of um, oil. I know some people like the vegetable oil and they have their reasons, but from the Dr. Furman, 
and the doctors that I'm following, they're basically saying to avoid all oils, extra virgin, extra extra virgin, pretty much all oils. Um, I need to do a little bit more research why, but I know the first thing is because they're all, you know, a lot of calories in even one tablespoon of oil, and I'm actually trying to lose weight, so I'm trying to replace those empty calories with calories that have a stronger nutritional value. So that's why I water saute and am avoiding oils. And it seems to be working out pretty good for me so far. So we'll just keep these going for a little while. Now that that's been cooking for a little bit, we're gonna go ahead and add the 8 ounces of the mushroom and let that cook for about five minutes until the mushrooms have gone down in size. We're also to lower our heat from high heat to a medium high heat. And I like to go ahead and add a little bit more water just to keep um, things from burning from the bottom of the pan. It will dissipate and then the mushrooms will also make its own water. And we let that cook for about five minutes until the mushrooms um, reduce in size and become soft. Not too soft, but you know, let it reduce in size some. So it's been about five minutes, so I am gonna go ahead and now add the one chopped orange bell pepper. This is my ballpark of what two carrots and probably a little extra because it calls for two carrots. But I only have shredded carrots. Put a little bit more. And then it's asking for about one little whole bag of, you know, how it has individual bags of the chopped broccoli. And like I said, I went ahead and chopped it up a little bit more. So I think I'm gonna guess this is like 12 ounces. I think that's what the bag uh, comes in. Put that, this is still on medium, high heat. And then the chopped spinach. And this is one frozen bag. of organic chopped spinach. And it says to let this cook for about five minutes on medium high heat, water sauteing. So we're gonna let that cook until the broccoli is also somewhat soft and the carrots are somewhat soft. So. We'll go ahead and try not to let that burn. Get that to kick down some, and then we'll move on to the next step. So now that we let that saute for about five minutes, we're gonna go ahead and add the seasonings. And the seasonings is one teaspoon of ore dried oregano, basil, and ground rosemary. And it says to sprinkle the seasonings And then to give that a couple of stirs to make sure that it's, oh, it smells delicious. To make sure that all the vegetables are coated. And once you give that a couple of stirs, it says to go ahead and turn off the heat and then set the vegetable mixture to the side so that we can move on to the next phase. Mmm. It smells delicious. Okay, so this is what happens when you're doing something for the first time. I forgot to add the zucchini, which should have been part of that mixture. So I'm gonna go ahead and saute the zucchini separately and then add it to the mixture to make up for my mistake. Hey, sometimes you just gotta fix things as they happen. So now we're gonna move on to the filling and I am new at cooking with tofu, but basically it's firm tofu or extra firm tofu and I already try to squeeze it. I know you can buy tofu presses and there's different ways to drain it, but after I squeezed it, I just wrap it up in napkins and sometimes two or three napkins, just depends, and get it as squeezed as possible and according to this it says to make the tofu filling a uh, filling in a bowl 
com combine the tofu along with the spices and I went ahead and already measured the spices and this is nutritional yeast I get Dr. Furman's nutritional yeast um, this one's unfortified and it's a savory seasonings and I get this on Amazon but it's two tablespoons of the nutritional yeast one and a half teaspoons of onion powder one and a half teaspoons of garlic powder one teaspoon of dried oregano and dried basil so that's what's in here and it basically says to, we're gonna try to make this look like ricotta. So we're gonna go ahead and add the spices and then smash it up with a fork. There's my fork. Until we get it crumbly. So I'm gonna crumble it. Just sort of crumble it first. Like I said, I am very new at cooking with tofu and then I mix the spices and I am going to go ahead and mash this with the fork so that it looks like ricotta cheese but it's not cheese and most of you know but in case you don't cheese is basically what causes breast cancer and the cheaper the cheese the more potent and easier to get the breast cancer so dairy was one of the first transitions that i made and if anyone knows me i would have cheese with everything so giving up milk and cheese was a little difficult at first until more and more of my friends started getting breast cancer and then it became easier especially as I started replacing my cheese with various other things. So I am really looking forward to it. So I think to me that's what ricotta cheese looks like. It's pretty crumbly. So I think break up, break down some of the bigger lumps. I think that's what it should look like. That's my guess. This is my first time making it, so we shall see. And we will move on to the next step. Now, I am new at working with tofu, so I went ahead and made this part off camera. But basically, it was one block of the firm tofu, and it said to crumble it up with a fork to try to make it look like um, ricotta cheese. And then the spices that we were supposed to add was two tablespoons of the nutritional yeast. I get my nutritional yeast by online. It's Dr. Furman's nutritional yeast. It comes unfortified and I get it on Amazon. So that's two tablespoons of the nutritional yeast, one and a half teaspoons of onion powder and garlic powder, and one teaspoon of dried oregano and dried basil. And then you go ahead and mix that together and crumble it up until it resembles ricotta cheese. So that's to me is what I think ricotta cheese would look like. And then the next step is to take the vegetables. Now that it's kind of cooled down, I went ahead and rewashed my hands and it says to mix. Oh, also to turn the oven on now to 350 degrees. And then it says um, in a large bowl, combine the cooked vegetables and the tofu filling gently mix using your hands if the vegetables are cool enough to prevent the vegetables from getting too crushed because we want it to not be too crushed because we want it to kind of look pretty and just not turn into just one smashed up mess we want to kind of have it keep its form to some extent because that makes it heartier too when we chew so I am using my hands, trying not to crush up the vegetables. I went ahead and added the grilled zucchini that I forgot to add earlier. And then it says we can start layering the lasagna pan. Now I don't have a lasagna pan, that looks good. But I do have a Pampered Chef stone that's you know kind of thick, so that's gonna be my lasagna pan. And according to this, it says, in the bottom of a 14-inch lasagna pad, spread the sweet potato mixture and then place a layer of the uncooked lasagna noodles on top 
and pour about one fourth, which is one and a half to two cups of the marinara sauce. And this is what I went to Whole Foods to get, which is the fat-free marinara sauce that I can't find at Trader Joe's and I haven't been able to find it anywhere else besides Whole Foods. Of course, you can order it from Amazon. So, first we layer the bottom of the pan with the sweet potato and then we put one layer of the uncooked lasagna noodles, whole wheat, and then we pour one and a half to two cups of the marinara sauce on top of the noodles. Arrange half of the vegetable tofu mixture and then continue layering. So we're going to go ahead and try that next and let's see how that goes. So here is move my coffee. I don't want any spills. So I always, when I'm doing something for the first time, read the directions like over and over again. So spread the sweet potato mixture. Um, do I do all of the sweet potato? Let's see. It says half. Pour more marinara on top of the noodles. Spread the remaining vegetable tofu. Place another layer of noodles. Put the mixture and finally spread a layer of marinara on top noodles. Garlic turn. Yeah. Okay. So remember, I had made extra sweet potatoes. So I'm gonna give it a nice coating the bottom of this pan and so therefore I really don't know how much that's going to add up to but I know that I love sweet potato oh, my oven's ready I know that I love sweet potato so I'm going to put a decent amount on the bottom That looks good to me. I'm just kind of trying to make it like even because one side is like taller than the other side. Okay, so this is what I just layered the bottom. So okay. I bought these organic uh, lasagna over at Whole Foods and this is the macaroni product it's made from um, Durham wheat semolina and that was the only one that I saw that said wheat so that's what I bought so I am gonna go ahead and it says give it one layer and that is what I'm doing then I'm going to break off some parts at the end because it's kind of over layering and I want it to give it a nice one layer so you know it's not rocket science just make it fit as best you can it is what it is right okay so then it says pour about two cups of the marinara sauce on top of the noodles. Oh. When you have carpal tunnel, it's hard to open jars. <laughs> Sometimes. Where's a good strong man when you need one? Got it. Okay. So, I am just sort of eyeballing this. I like a lot of sauce though, so we'll see. Um, getting my little spoon to evenly coat this. I'm going to add a little more to this bottom mixture. Apparently the noodles will cook inside. Since I like mine saucy, I went ahead and bought extra marinara sauce. 
because I'd hate to run out in the middle of my recipe. So then it says arrange half of the vegetable tofu mixture on top of the marinara and then arrange another layer of noodles on top of the veggies. Okay, so here we go. My pan already looks full. I might need to invest in a lasagna pan. Or I might need to make this two times. <laughs> so, and I think that's what I'm gonna do because it wants me to layer and layer, but my pan is not tall enough to do that. So we'll see how best I can make this come out. Okay, so on top of the mixture, okay. Um, then it says pour more marinara sauce on top of the noodles. No, wait, let's see. Arrange half of the vegetable tofu mixture on top of the marinara. Then arrange a layer of noodles on top of the veggies. And then pour more marinara sauce on top of the noodles. Okay. I like so much want to put more marinara sauce right now. But that's not what the directions say. So I'm going to try to follow the directions as best that I can. sauce on top of the noodles. And slide that around. Like I said, I am running out of room. Okay, I want more marinara sauce. Isn't as hard. There. Now it's saying to like add more and go a whole nother layer. I am going to add a little bit more on top of the vegetables. But I don't want this to bubble over when I'm cooking. So let's see what how I can make it fit. in the oven because all this prepping has me hungry. Okay, looks like I was able to get all of the vegetable mixture. Into the casserole dish going to have to invest in a deeper lasagna pan or a lasagna pan because this is not even a lasagna pan.
let's go ahead and move on to the next step. I probably put too much sweet potato, but like I said, I really like sweet potato. So in my opinion, there's no such thing as too much sweet potato. So I did go ahead and give it another layer of noodles and sauce. It's pretty much overflowing. Then I covered it, um, I cut cherry tomatoes in half and I put the cherry tomatoes on top. And now I'm just going to sprinkle some of the basil on top for garnish. Just, you know, to your liking. I want to get as much of it covered as possible because I like basil. And I'm also almost out, so I just kind of want to use what I have left. Then it says to go ahead and cover it with tin foil. I am going to put one layer of wax paper and then the tin foil since it's kind of like overflowing. And then it says um, cover it with uh, aluminum foil, bake for 60 minutes, remove the foil, and then cook for 10 more minutes so that the top of the lasagna looks baked and not wet. So that's what we're going to do next and pop it in the oven. Let's see how it comes out and how much of the oven I'm going to have to clean later. So I did go ahead and do what it says and I gave it one more layer of noodles and one more layer of tomato sauce and then I cut cherry tomatoes in half and I layered the cherry tomatoes on top and then I sprinkled with the dried basil. You should could also use fresh basil but I'm just finishing up with what I had. I'm going to put one layer of wax paper on top and then I'm going to cover it, seal it with aluminum foil, stick it in the oven that's been preheated at, to 350 for about 60 minutes, then take the foil off and cook for another 10 minutes so that the top looks baked and not wet. Okay, so I cooked it for the 60 minutes like it said and then I took off the foil and I let it cook an extra 10 minutes. The direction says until the top looks dry and not wet. So that looks pretty dry to me. Then it says to let it stand for about 15 minutes before slicing into servings. So we're going to go ahead and let that stand and then take one final picture after it's cut up.